Greetings, Nimrods. Today we're looking at this Fisker's splitting axe, which uh, is interesting in that the handle goes around the head instead of through it. Uh, warrantied for life, apparently, we'll see. But, uh, and here's the Fisker's Maul, which we've had for a little bit longer, for about two years. Really like this thing. It's heavy, it's eight pounds as compared to five and three quarter pounds. Or five and, um, the, the splitting axe, I, I had to go weigh it because I didn't believe it weighed that much. They really seem light. And part of the reason is the handle is incredibly light, uh, hollow and really light. The uh, maul is nice in that it has a shock absorbing handle and it really does work. Um, the axe handle is completely different. It's seems to be like a carbon fiber hollow handle and it's incredibly light but it also uh, if you miss and you hit the handle on the log you're going to know about it it really has no shock absorbing features to it in my opinion um, it is an axe so you can chop wood with it to a certain degree i'm not sure it's what you use for a felling axe but um, you know we're just cutting these i didn't cut these all the way through when i was bucking it because i wanted to save the logs it's, one log and point in the same direction so we could do a fair comparison of the axe. Fortunately, it's not the best comparison because this is red oak and it's frozen and relatively straight grain, so it just splits too easy. So it's not really a challenge for either tool. Uh, what I do like the Fisker's axe for is when it comes time to just dice things up, it's, it's pretty effective uh, and, and quick and light. It's very, very light. Again, it's five and three quarter pounds, but it doesn't feel like it. So here's Frog with the uh, axe and now the maul. And you can see the maul, he's getting used to it, but it's a little bit big for him. If you're a 120 pound Nimrod, you might want to stick with the axe. Uh, the maul is a, it's a beast to, to swing that all day. Um, but it does work on the heavier logs. Uh, we don't really have any good ones here today, but if you get into some really big stuff, um, it, it'll save you from taking out the, uh, the splitting wedges to a certain degree. Um, definitely worth the price of admission. The axe, uh, I don't use it all that much, but again, it, it, in the straight gain stuff, it's, it's nice to have. Um, here, I'm gonna split one with the axe and then I'm just gonna grab my old maul what I've been using since I was uh, Frog's age, which is a long time ago. Uh, and I've split a lot of wood with these older style malls. I'm sure you've all seen these. This one's probably been rehandled a dozen times. Uh, but this wood is pretty easy. Um, if you could only have one, well, thank God we don't live in that world. It's like only having one gun. It's just we live in a country where we're rich enough and we're free enough to have more than one of these things. But uh, yeah, I might take the uh, the old splitting maul and the uh, the axe if I had to be limited. Um, I do like the the big maul. Uh, the one reason, the one downside of the axe is that, uh, again, it's an axe. It doesn't have a sledgehammer on the backside. So if you get into doing wedges, it's not going to happen. But uh, it's a great tool. So highly recommend them. Happy hunting, Nimrods.